Have you ever wondered how road signs end up in the perfect spot? Or how they remain so visible from a distance? Or even asked yourself how they're made? Well, let's take a trip and shadow a sign crew to discover the art and science behind answers to these questions. If you ride a bike, drive on our roads, walk the streets. One undeniable fact is that road signs are all around us and decoding their meaning quickly is a critical factor in keeping us safe. Each road sign is defined as a traffic control device which must follow five criteria. They must fulfill a need, command attention, command respect from road users, convey a clear, simple meaning, and give adequate time for proper response. These criteria are law for governing all traffic control devices in the Manual on Uniform Traffic Control Devices, or MUTCD. The manufacturing process is comprised of three steps, including the planning phase, the design phase, and the application phase. SCDOT has compiled a list of all of the road signs needed for replacement through an intricate online filing system. The sign shop gets the desired request from our traffic engineering department. During the planning phase, they get the materials needed with the desired colors, sizes, and shapes. One of two processes are selected for designing the signs. For the signs that are produced regularly or have the same information, a screen printing process is done. This squeegees ink across the screen onto reflective material. For specialized signs, like the ones with specific city names or mileage, a printer is used which prints a created design into the sheeting. Applying the sheeting to the aluminum is done with accuracy and precision. This must be done perfectly with no bubbles and always straight. There are two major types of materials used, the base material and the reflective material. The base material is the hard structure that keeps the sign flat. The reflective material, in very simple terms, is a big sticker that we place over the base with whatever colors, images, and words are needed. Aluminum is one of the most common base materials used. This flat sheet varies in sizes and shapes, like a stop sign or a yield sign. The specialized reflective material will last for over a decade. This is because of the laminate film that aids in protecting the sign against UV light as well as graffiti. The colors used are based on federal guidelines and requirements. Barcodes are placed on the back of each sign which provides information on the type of sign it is, the type of sheeting, and the date it was manufactured. The signs are stored, weighed, and then shipped to the maintenance office so they're on hand when the sign needs to be replaced. Using a mapping system, SEDOT crews head out to replace signs that have reached the end of their life expectancy. Tools such as a post puller, a sledgehammer, and dive cap are among some equipment used for sign installation. These signs will last for about 12 years. Refurbishing old signs that have reached the end of their life cycles is a cost-saving procedure that is used here at SCDOT. When signs are at the end of their life but are in still decent condition, they are recycled. The decent signs go through a refurbishing process which strips off reflected material and gives us good condition aluminum to reapply to. These eight dedicated men and women will create over 75,000 signs over the course of this year for the entire state. Every sign that's crafted plays a vital role to ensure a safer journey for all of us. With a renewed sense of awareness, let's remember that these signs are more than just metal. These safety devices play an integral role in creating safer roads for all of us.